this little girl who is so special to us that we call her God's little gift of sunshine. And I think of the number of years she's going to have to carry in her memory of this idiotic moment of yours, I just go bitch. <laughs> Opening up a big old can of right. it there. That was, uh, you just saw a clip from the film Billy Jack, one of the hottest independent films of its time. In fact, it still holds the record for the highest grossing, most profitable independent film of all time. Wow, hey, Billy Jack himself, actor Tom Laughlin's back on hey. the streets, so to speak. Hey. Join us now. Good to see you. You guys are very nice, but as I told you, I'm really not Tom Laughlin. Really? He's fatter, older brother. Okay. Oh, oh, I bet right. you still got it, though. Chris, come over here. Stand yeah, across, <laughs> across, across the, the table. Open up the big old can. Right across the table, Chris. Just I mean, lay him out. Just you want me to leave? Leap over yeah, or just do it from A little bit later on. We'll bring out management while we're I wouldn't ready. take on Chris. He's tough. Now, how fun is that to watch when you're watching clips of yourself in the movies, besides thinking, boy, I should look like a young whippers whippersnapper back then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've seen it so many times, and but the thing about that scene is yesterday I had a man who was uh, in a federal prison in Kentucky, in Asheville, Kentucky at the time, and there was racial tension between the blacks and the whites. It was just very dangerous, and they played that movie, and he thought they got to be nuts. But what happened is it eased the racial tension I unbelievably. Because I'm very proud of that scene. I think we show uh, as clearly as you can what racial prejudice really is and what it does. And that was a real scene. And my brother-in-law, when I went to marry my wife, Dolores, who's a star in the film, that's how I learned all about the Indians. They were bragging to me how they used to do that to the Indians when they got their allotment of flour. Unbelievable. And so I twisted it into there. Here, I want to marry the girl. So I can't tell how angry. I can't throw them through the plate glass window. So I went back to the motel and wrote the scene. I got to tell you, when I was a little kid, I grew up in a uh, three-boy household. I was the youngest. And so my older brothers were eight and ten years older than me. And they found that you could really karate chop, chop an eight-year-old across the room <laughs> much more effectively. And so I was always the brunt of their Billy Jack yeah. attacks. And uh, <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, we weren't I'm advocating. you're sitting on that side of the table. Then. We weren't advocating <laughs> violence, but they, they loved the sort of of the yeah. vigilante approach that Billy Jack Yeah, the did. righteousness. And, and the, the point is, I started to mention before, we're here because this is the release of our DVDs. That's right. The packet, you can get it single or otherwise. But it's the first time you'll get to see Billy Jack Goes to Washington. It was never allowed to be released in a theater. Uh, Senator Vance Hardy had a major screening with Senator Cohen, Lucille Ball, gets up and attacks me and says, you communist, you'll never get this released. Everything on this earth gone. And it's true, it was never released till now. And Why? What's in it? It is the most powerful expose of how corrupt, however corrupt you think the Congress and the Senate are, you're not close. And it shows, and if you want to learn about the California blackout, <laughs> and I'm serious, you yeah. know, you go see this movie, it'll show you how it's done in the back scenes, it's deregulation and all the profiteering, and, and, oh, and let me, do, look, come on. They can take a guy on an erector set with three spindly legs and land him on the moon and lift it <laughs> off and hit the mother shit and get back here. Are you telling me we can't have electricity in California? Yeah, if simple as turning the lights on. I know it does seem yeah. like there's something Wait, wrong. Wait, you, you're saying that some of those politicians are lying? I know that sounds, <laughs> I know. I, uh, Wait a I, second. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. Oh boy. Listen, yeah. let me tell you, I hate them all. And the bottom line of it is, you know, politicians lie as easily as they breathe. And the point about it is they have to. The system makes you, I ran for president in 91. You did? Yes, uh, as a protest. And the point is, uh, when I did, I mean, the first thing every, you know, this group likes guns, you got to say, then you th there's a scene in Billy Jack Goes to Washington, it'll blow your mind. Senator uh, E.G. E. G. Marshall, who is just brilliant, tells Billy Jack we're voting no on a bill. He's the dumb new senator. So he tells the press, he comes in, and here's E.G. Marshall voting. We've got to pass this bill tomorrow or the world will end. He goes, I'm, says, I told the press we're, pressed and we're, we're voting no. He says, I am voting no. He says, but I heard you just heard him. He said, that's right. Back home, half the people are for it, half one. Their way, this way, there's a little something for everybody. Oh, wow. And then he says, and don't worry, you'll get used to it. It'll be referred to committee. Yeah. Remember Clinton on Monday had everybody there on violence? This films are a major cause of violence next to the, next to the parents. Has everybody there for a big hearing on violence? Where is he on Saturday night? 
David Geffen's house in Hollywood raising five million dollars. Right, right. There you go. How'd and you it was referred to a committee. How'd you get this role? What were you doing at the time when you tried out for the... Oh, we wrote it. No, there was no trying oh, out. Oh, really? Yeah, my wife and I wrote the oh, script. It's that. all under fake names and... Uh, uh, because no. now independent, you say independent movie, it's kind of got a little, you know, Sundance, uh, right. sort of oh, chic no. and, uh, uh, you know, attachment to it. Then it was a whole different story. It's 30 years ago. This is 30 years ago and you, you couldn't get in the business. In fact, when we made the film, unless you were a member of the IA, they, the projections wouldn't run it. They'd put a scratch on it, they'd ruin the film. Uh, it was really, we wrote it, she produced it, I directed it, all under fake names. Mm -hmm. And uh, we played the two roles and, and marketed them ourselves, finally got Warners to market. market. They tried to kill it, they dumped it in a porno theater in <laughs> Chicago, oh, literally. No, that's true. I mean, uh, we had to sue three different studios to get it to the screen intact. Well, Man, it's a lot different. And Washington, today. we never got to the screen. Well, so, and it's back and it's in DVD <laughs> collection. Will you stick around? Would you? Yes, you absolutely. Talk more about this collection and uh, your career. Oh, and yeah. also, I want to find out what you've been doing since then. Okay. But I got a plug. I'm going to be out at the Tower Record on Saturday at one o'clock at Sirius. There'll be time for plugging oh, later. Is that <laughs> okay? I don't know how to. I haven't done this Why before. Do you think oh yeah, we have plenty of plug time. You're saying then is that it doesn't make any difference to you whether this jury finds you innocent or guilty. And it doesn't make any difference to you whether you live or die. And you expect us to believe that you have absolutely no fear of the death penalty? I have a lot of fear. But I have a lot more respect. Long ago, I learned that he's my constant companion. He eats with me, he walks with me, he even sleeps with me. I'm sorry, I, I must have missed something back there. Who is this faithful companion of yours? Death. Oh, I see. Do you remember the lines? Like, can you repeat most of your speeches to this day? No. Oh. <laughs> I was just thinking, that's interesting. What does he say next? <laughs> and I wrote it. That's We're funny. back with the uh, actor... Uh, Tom Laughlin. Uh, Laughlin. See, now I'm doing it. We, right. we've got our own you ever Laughlin. done weather? <laughs> Would no, you like to do I'd weather? love to. We should have him do weather sometimes. Yeah, we I'd have love people to do, do weather. weather. You were even in the uh, life stuff. You were in the South Pacific. Oh, God, yeah. South yeah. Pacific. yeah, that was what one of my movie. first little... Uh, I was in about 20, 30 movies and TV. Always, we came, my wife and I came to Hollywood to make a difference. I didn't want to be an actor. We didn't want to be famous. We wanted to change the world in some small way in some corner. So it was a legacy. You couldn't direct a picture unless you were in the union or your dad was in the union. Uh, it was awful. So we struggled, earned the money, yeah. paid the bills, went off and made our pictures and edited them in our own living room and did all that. How much that. did it cost you to make the first one? <laughs> the Born Losers we made for $160,000. Wow. That was a bike movie. That's Jim and Carrey's uh, trailer bill. Uh, you know, <laughs> deli yeah. yeah, no, we made it for 160 and it went off and was the all-time box office champ, independent champion at that time. Wow. Born and then Losers. Billy Jack passed it. That was the first movie, Born Losers. How old were you when that came out? God, how old was I? Somewhere in my early 30s. Now, the point is, we ha I had written Billy Jack, as I told you, way back when I my, saw what my brother-in-law and friends thought was funny to do to the Indians in Winter, South Dakota. Dolores, the star of the movie, is she's this gorgeous, this incredible woman here. <laughs> Who and she really is. Yeah. She really is. <laughs> right. She's from Winter. She's off the rosebud, and that was my first taste of it. But the point is, uh, I wrote that, and it took us 17 years, because no studio would touch it, because any movie about Indians is box office poison. And it was about racial stuff and don't make it. So yeah. it took us 17 years to raise the money to get the film made. Wow. Let's talk about what you're doing now and your involvement with uh, domestic abuse and domestic violence. And, well, my, and, and, and start with the, with the way you kind of got started, just reading this about your first experience with, with that. Which, which, what does it about say? About hearing the, the police officer? It was a police officer who lived downstairs. Oh, God Almighty. They have that in there. Well, yeah, we, it's right here in the press. We right have, the you press. need to read up on it? Oh, oh, my God. On it oh, my God. Who's, who's in the wings here? What? No, that's true. My wife and I had just gotten married, and below us lived the police officer. We're in a little apartment in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And he would uh, beat his wife, and he'd kick her in the belly to kill the child. Oh. That was our first experience. But, yes, I have in the, in the field of Jungian psychology, my life always was. This was a peripheral part of it, acting in the films, but was uh, a Jungian psychology and battering uh, is, we have a program for battering thing that works, and there are very few that really do. There are some darn good ones out there, uh, but basically the batterer is a terrified human being, and he's terrified, he's not a man, underneath he feels very impotent, 
and of course he's going to be abandoned. The number one fear driving him is ab abandonment. The woman will go to the grocery store and find some guy who's more attractive and leave him. So it's a terrible, terrible disease in terms of, you know, O.J. is the ultimate example of that. And he lived right down the street from right, At one point you lived right next door to him, didn't you? No, just down the street. Down the street. And, yeah, and O.J. was, you know, he's a monster. I mean, his son, Jason, for my daughter, was he was in that group. He'd be in our house once every several months having been beaten up by O.J. Oh, uh, he's wow. He's a monster. And I caught him once with Nicole. Uh, they were doing it and come running out. She's running out screaming and I'm walking my dog. Oh, hi, Tom. How are you? Really? Like yeah, nothing's going sure. on? Yeah, but the, he's just, it's very typical of the, uh, the battering. And you know what's shocking is there's many women batter their husbands as men. You know, the, I remember I had a case one time in which the girl, the, the woman had uh, stabbed him in the back with a sear, uh, scissors. And uh, so it was, in, oh, are you going to do it again? They'd made up. Yeah, if he acts up, I probably will. You know, but yeah, no, it, but the it, battering of women is an enormously rising and, and there's nowhere for women to go. Don't believe in these shelters thing. Yes, if you can get in, they're filled. You can only stay 30 days. And then what do you do? You're kicked out. You got to go back to the guy because you don't have, it's, it's a real problem. A vicious kind of cycle. So seminars then that you offer? Oh, I teach, or? I train mostly therapists. Most oh. of what I do is train therapists, uh, and, and I have a group I've been training. But we also do the same thing with cancer, and I was <laughs> talking to one of your employees here, we have the same thing, why every marriage is supposed to die, <laughs> why at first you're in this idyllic restaurant phase, and oh my God, what happens? You know, where did it go wrong? Well, that's a sexual dysfunction and what real love is, that's all that's what we do with Jungian psychology. In the same way, we have a cancer program that's really effective, hmm. psychological treatment of cancer. Before we go, I don't want to forget, you're going to be hanging out at uh, Tower Records this weekend. Tower Records, Saturday, 1 o'clock. I'm doing it. And, and i got to plug our website. If you want to know about all our battering and this and our big new political film, we're going to change That's this. right. You're working on something right now. Big. We came to make a difference. We're doing the most powerful, explosive, controversial political film that literally, I swear to you, and you have me back here, if it doesn't fundamentally change the entire electoral system and America, it's so... Uh, powerful. You can get all that on BillyJack.com. Which, of course, we have linked to upn31.com. Are you linked to us? We are two steps you. ahead of you. Oh, Click my God. The, now, you know, it's, I don't know what that means. I know not. I'm computer so illiterate. You've got to learn. Oh, you got to see you. when they go on there, they go, get linked right to yours. Get right to link to hey, BillyJack.com. You know link this new movie, any uh, big old cans of whoop butt being opened up in it? <laughs> What, what language are you just speaking of? You know, you're hip we, and cool, no, man. You don't know what he says half the time. Yeah, Billy Jackism is taking place <laughs> oh, in this new movie. Oh, absolutely. All right. I'll we'll look forward no, it, to see it, it. Tom Laughlin. It is a beauty. Nice meeting you. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Thank you nice very you much for having by. me. God bless you. Good to see you. And I'm sorry you got beat up by your brothers. Bring them around. It was a good thing. I'm a little old, it's a little a fun fat, memory. but I can still have it. You got it. All right. Watch this and you can go back home for Christmas. Send this to Steve. Instructional video. There you go. Time now.